What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the program. My name is Tyler. You are watching Mom's Basement MMA, and today I am joined by a welterweight contender from Florida. He trains at a Fusion XL and Killcliffe FC. JP St. Louis is back with me on the program. JP, I appreciate the time. March 23rd, uh, we got a big uh, title fight that you'll be in. I'm sure you're really excited to uh, show out for that. Yep. Uh, one first and foremost, I want to say just thank you for having me again. Good to see you. And then, yeah, got a big fight coming up, and excited to do and you know bring some violence absolutely well before we get into the uh nuts and bolts of this upcoming fight let's pan out a little bit you're currently on a three bout winning streak and i'm curious like you've gone on winning sprees like this before but like when you think about this most recent like tear that you're on do you feel like there's a part of your game just overall as a mixed martial artist that you're like hitting new levels um, at this particular moment in time? Yeah, I would definitely go and say that I think a lot of my, that recent, the recent streak is due to me growing as a martial artist, m maturing as a martial artist as well. And one of the things I've been saying a lot recently is I think finally my talent and my experience is starting to actually catch up to each other. Um, if you look at some of my earlier fights, a lot of my wins, you know, I was getting them first round, first round. I wasn't able to actually build that experience and get that cage time, which is very, like, it's a big necessity to any fighter and any athlete in any sport. It's like, you have to have that experience. And I wasn't getting it. And, and, and especially as like, I'm not a fast starter, as you would say, I'm not like one of those guys like, oh, you got to get past the first wave because I'm pretty methodical and I have a measured approach. I'm still violent, but it's measured. But I was just first round finishes, first round over and over and over. And if you, as you can see, it's like my, starting with Austin Trotman, that was a decision lost. I went up a weight class and fought Derek Brunson, the wrestling coach, and had a decision loss. You know, a lot of cage time and like, like experience in there, 15 minutes of fighting. That changes a lot that was my first time in years since i think my fight with tim Hiley that i went a full 15 minutes of fighting and that was huge for me because i was like okay i got to see what it's like having to sit down again go back out there sit down again go back out there knowing what that lactic acid feels like and understanding how to continue fighting under that pressure that type of stress so after that, you know, I got a first round finish, but then my next fight, I ended up going to the almost the third round, but it got stopped in between that round. So it's like 10 minutes of fighting. Like, yeah, 10 minutes, 10 and a half, whatever you want to call it. And then my last fight was a three round fight against a undefeated prospect. So it's like within those fights, I've gotten so much more cage time. That's 30 minutes between almost 30 minutes between two fights. And that is huge because two 15 minute fights. So that's 30 minutes right there. And then um, I had one that go that went like to the third round. So looking at 40 minutes of fighting, almost an hour, that that's something that <laughs> it's just like, you're, you're lucky when you get it, especially when you win, because now it's like, Oh, I've been here before. I'm not stressing. And I think that's where, like in my last fight, that kind of played a big role because I was able to keep composed and I didn't get gassed. Like he got gassed trying to control me. To get to your level, what do some of these like young amateur fighters or new pros need to know? Like what do they need to like be aware of before they can like ascend to a position uh, that you've achieved in this game? Um, I appreciate that. Very kind. I, I'm constantly dealing with the uh, the thoughts, the negative thoughts where I was like, man, I haven't like done anything. It's like shit because I have such a high expectation for myself. But then I also have to keep in mind that it's like everything is relative. Like for me, I, I there's so much more that I want to accomplish and there's so much more I can accomplish. But I also have to understand that people can look at where I'm at and be like, I would just want to be able to like get there. There's some people that are just like, I just want one fight. Mm -hmm. It's like, I never really thought more of that or it just, I think about when I used to like see guys like Paul Felder or different fighters on the regional level. 
And it's like, oh man, I would love to be able to just like get to that level one day. So with that, I kind of tell people that understand that everything is, it's, it's like a marathon, it's a process and don't fall in love with like the outcome. That's something that I've been saying a lot, like uh, Kobe, I got it from Kobe. Like don't fall in love and obsess over like the outcome, whether you win or lose. Like obviously everyone wants to win. That's the only way that you're going to keep on uh, moving forward and progressing in the sport. But at the end of the day, when you start obsessing over that, it can uh, affect your performance. And then it can also start affecting like your mental health because there's been times where I thought it's like, oh yeah, one more win and I'm there, you know, and then it doesn't happen. It's like, maybe I lose or it's like, oh, I just didn't get picked or I've been on like prospect of the month. It's like, oh, I'm about to get some more attention. doesn't happen. I'm like on MMA junkie people to look out for with a win this month. Shit happens and it, it fucking sucks. Like it, it mm-hmm. hurts and it makes you feel like all the work that you put in was for nothing. And I try to tell people, it's like, don't fall in love with that. It's like, everything will come when it will come. And the biggest thing that you have to focus on is just, you know, being in the gym and not just being there, but having like being very intentional with your training and also understanding that everything is like the sport is progressing. People are getting better. And that's one of the things that I've been lucky in a sense that I've been able, I came in at a certain time. Like I didn't start training MMA until 2015 and I was thrown right in with very high level people, people that everyone knows, like they know now or they didn't know who they were. And I was able to watch that and kind of, you know, kind of ride off the coattails in terms of what I should be doing, what I shouldn't be doing and learning from them and trying to advance at a rate where it's like at their age, at like my age, I'm better than what they were at that time. And tell people it's like, hey, I will give you like all the not like secrets, but I will help you out, give you advice, tell you what I'm doing to you and tell you this is how you beat what I'm doing just so you can try to improve and then that will help me improve because i'm big on um you want to raise the level of everyone in the gym at least your sparring partners like 125ers i'm not training with them but i can still like try to help them out but a good like teammate is going to want to see everybody get better and if everybody getting better means that my sparring days are even harder then so be it because that's going to help me figure out the puzzle, crack whatever codes I need to, and that mental resilience that you need to continue to work on in order to improve. So I, I definitely, uh, I feel like I instilled that kind of wisdom. And I'll also be like, Hey, don't be a fucking idiot. It's like, like actually take this shit seriously because you will get fucked up. JP, you agreed to take a title fight with Combat Night. Now, this is a promotion you're familiar with. This will be your mm-hmm. fifth bout with this promotion in your career. A guy like you, you could fight anywhere. You could fight with LFA. You could fight with CFFC. And n- name your pick of a regional promotion. You could fight there. You chose to uh, set foot in the cage again with Combat Night. What ma- what was it about them that uh, made you want to uh, sign on the dotted line and perform with these guys again? Well, first and foremost, just like shout out to Mitch. Um, Mitch is a great dude. And, you know, Mitch, Richard, Ramsey, the whole combat night team, they've taken care of me. And one of the things that I see is that they take care of their fighters and they promote their fighters heavy. And they actually do care. Like Mitch being a fighter, professional fighter, he understands all of those things. And he's just a genuine person in the sense that, like, if you follow Mitch Shamali, um, I guess Shamale technically, but if you follow him on social media and combat night, you'll see that any of their guys that they have, like, fought for them, gone somewhere, they are constantly posting. Like, they will share so much about them. And it's more of a... Not that other organizations don't have it because I'm cool with other organizations and I respect them, but I feel like for what Combat Night is doing, I want to be a part of it. I like being a part of it and it just works out. And sometimes it's just nice to fight with people that you're comfortable with, you know? 
I completely understand. This is a title fight, and I'm going to ask you a basic question because I don't know. Is this a three-round fight, or are we in a uh, five-rounder? It's in a it's a three round three round fight. And yeah. with this being a title fight, now you'll have to school me a little bit because I'm just kind of curious. Like you've been doing this for for many many years. With this being a title fight, do you have to change your approach to this fight, or is this just any other fight? But you know, at the end of it, you get a belt. I'm taking mostly the latter option, but. My approach isn't changing. If anything, I'm keeping myself just calm and not trying to fall in love with the fact, oh, this is for a title fight. This means so much more because, like, as to bring it back to Kobe, you know, when you win, you still have to wake up in the morning and go and do the same grind. You lose, still have to wake up in the morning and do the same thing. And a win, loss, whether it's a title fight or not, it's still the same shit the next day granted how i'm looking at the title is just a way to further separate myself from the competition and show that i was like i'm on a different level so i'm not really stressing about the fact that it's a title because it's it's not five rounds you know so i'm i'm not having to change my approach in that sense i'm just continuously trying to be not even trying it's like trying but also implementing ways of being a better mixed martial artist and i have been showing i've shown constant improvement and i will continue to show that and it's only going to get worse it's like the more experience i get the more dangerous i'm going to be i've always proven to be dangerous that's that's nothing new but now it's like there's a lot more calmness coming and it's scary when you have someone who's very violent a finisher and then they're now a lot calmer You'll be sharing the cage with a man. His name is Daniel Morrison. What are some of the things that you see uh, about him? Because, you know, I'm looking at this and if I were you and if I like saw this opponent's name on a contract, I would be a uh, I'd be a little surprised. Like, oh, wow, like this guy wants to fight me. What was your initial reaction when you heard that uh, it was going to be against this guy for a title fight? I just thought I was like, oh, he's confident. You know, I think that's the first thing that jumped out. And that'll probably be the biggest thing is he's confident. He thinks that he has what it takes to take me out. And I love that because I love to take people out when they think that they have something over on me. And it's not any disrespect or anything. But sometimes I am like, oh, it's like, you think you see some shit, huh? It's like, all right. And then it just makes me more competitive. And that if there is one thing that I am, it is extremely competitive. It doesn't matter what we're doing. It's like, I want to win bad. And I'm going to do everything to win. And I've been in those positions many, many times. And I respect that confidence, but I'm going to have to break him. That's it. When I think about you, I think about submissions. I think about knockouts. And when you look at like your background, like your track record of being a fight finisher, do you feel like, just your entire body of work, all your experience, your stopping power, that 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 those two things give you massive advantages over your opponent going into this fight? Oh, yeah, I, I definitely think so. I think you don't intimidate your opponent with what you're saying. You don't intimidate with how you act. It's your footage. It's what you're able to do. It's what you're doing to other people before. And since an amateur... I've only had finishes and that, it's like, that doesn't even have all my amateur, like topology doesn't have all my amateur MMA fights. Um, it's like, I've only won MMA fights up until the last one via finish. So it's something that they're, they're they have to think about. Any opponent is going to see that and be like, damn, like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, even if they watch it, it's like, I'm not that impressed, whatever it is. But it's like, there's a reason why someone finishes that many people. And it's a mentality. And I also think that it's a testament to that person's skill at finishing fights. It's like, I don't have that many decisions. I have one decision win now. And that was against someone who was undefeated. And I took that fight a little short. Like I was in uh, Boston cornering for a UFC fight. And then I took the fight. And 
a week later, I finally get back and then I start training for it. I'm like wasn't able to really train while I was out there. And that it's just your body of work is what people will look at. And that's how they like get nervous or whatever. And I know he sees it. I know his coaches see it. And I know that they're like, this is a dangerous matchup. Granted, they accepted it. So that means that they're confident that they think that they can beat me. And I'm more confident that they cannot. I know you're a pretty popular guy. I know there's going to be a ton of people that show up to watch you perform for everyone buying a ticket for everyone who's uh, watching the pay-per-view at home. What can they expect when uh, they watch you fight this guy for a uh, 170 pound title? They can expect some calm, calculated violence. That's that pressure is going to be something different. You know, Orlando hasn't seen me fight yet. You know, Florida has in terms of, like Tallahassee and Jacksonville, but Orlando is going to get to see what everybody like talks about. If people are talking, it's like, you're, you're going to get to witness firsthand, like a JP too much fight, you know, before I let you go, were there any sponsors or were there any other uh, people from your gym that you've been training with that you need to thank before we uh, wrap this up? Oh yeah. In terms of sponsors, just would like to give a shout out to athlete recovery room in Orlando. Number one place for recovery. Also give a swish physical therapy a shout out as well. They've helped me out. Um, nah dude podcast. And in terms of teammates, you know, <laughs> there's a lot between fusion and uh kill cliff. But in terms of fusion, I got my guys like Nick McCarty, um, Julian Williams, my head coach. He is also one of my main training partners. And then just getting rounds in with uh, a new a newer teammate, Julio, Julio Cesar Chavez. That's what he goes by on IG. So he's he's been helping me a lot. We've been training with each other. And then in terms of Kill Cliff, damn near all the 170s. But Takashi Sato, been a big help. Uh, Yusaku uh, Kisho, Kishinido, Kishinida, I think. And then guys like Kevin Pease, um, and then my guy Dylan as well. Just it's like there, there's a endless supply of people that have been helping me and just training with me, giving me rounds. And I I feel like I could be forgetting some people, but everyone who helps me, I always try to make sure that I show appreciation for each person, whether they're to fight pro or like an amateur soon to turn pro who has like talent. It's always like, I appreciate you being here to help me get better. And that's what it's all about. So really just a big thank you to everyone who shares the mat with me and is consistently pushing me to be better. And thank you JP for sharing some time with me before this title fight. I appreciate you being on the program. I wish you the best of skill and let's do this again real soon, my friend. Look forward to it. You'll see me after I get that nice little belt around my waist.